Why hello all, welcome back to another video. Uh, today I am in VRoot Studio because I'm going to be doing a, doing, doing a quick overview of basically how I create my models because I've been asked um, sometimes over online and sometimes in real life like how do I make my models. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick overview of that here. So many of you probably know or have noticed on your own uh, that uh, the software I use to make my models is Vroid Studio. Um, and I can't show you the menu of Vroid right now because then you guys would see some things you're not supposed to see until later this year. So, <laughs> But basically we just have a basic uh, female preset model here. This is exactly what the model that I am currently using um, started out like. I. <laughs> I just got from here to this somehow. I didn't use tutorials other than like for absolutely what I had to and I didn't really watch YouTube videos. I just straight up was like, you know what, I want to be VTuber and I downloaded this and then I stumbled through it until I figured out something and my first model was really bad. Um, you guys actually only saw the second edition of my VTuber model. Yeah, if you thought the the one that you guys saw, the first one that I ever uploaded was bad, you guys should have seen the first edition. That was the second one. That was 2.0. Um, <laughs> but basically, the sliders, especially when you're deciding like facial shape and facial features, when you're not quite sure exactly what you want your model to look like, these things are going to be your best friend. Because when I was just stumbling through this thing, trying to figure out what I wanted my model to look like, because I had like a concept idea in my head, but I didn't really know for sure how to translate that to a 3D model. Um, these are going to be your best friend, because you can just kind of mess around with these, you know, move the eyes up, move the eyes to the side, rotate them inwards or outwards, whatever, until you get something that you think you kind of like, you know? It depends on what you're going for, the style. You could go for creepy, you could go for anime, you could go for cute. Um, just about everything you can do. There's also face presets over here that you can kind of select one that kind of looks like the idea that you're trying to go for and then mess with it from there. Um, the only thing about the sliders and the presets that I will say is that if you're trying to get like anything greatly exaggerated, like um, on this model my ear is here, they are very tricky to get using just the presets and sliders. I had to um, hand put these in because they're very tricky to, it's very tricky to manipulate the presets and sliders in order to get them to look this way. Um, for eyes, these eye sets is going to be again your presets, but this is changing like what the inside of the eye looks like or the shape of it. Irises is something that you're gonna probably run into trouble with. I definitely did the first time I did it. You can see that my character here, I'm trying to open my eyes wider, but my character is not doing it. There we go. Um, has different shaped pupils, and that caused a bit of an issue because it meant that I basically had to draw my own irises. Um, so the way that I did that is I took this blank preset iris, I went into edit texture, and then, if it ever loads, thank you, and then I basically clicked export. So what export does is it's going to take a file that you have here, which is going to be this like little template file here, and you're going to export it into your computer. And then from there, you can um, put it into a different device. What I did is I put the file into my drawing tablet so that then I could draw the texture into it and import the texture itself into Vroid. Um, and this is a technique I use constantly is basically just exporting the template texture so that it's the right size and so that it looks correct when it's in the studio so you don't have to figure out like all of the actual like 3D mapping out of everything because you can't just draw a shirt if you want your VTuber model to wear a shirt if you're doing 3D VTubing. You gotta figure out all the weird template stuff. Um, so it's best to just export a blank template so that you have the shape and the size down and then you can draw your own design over it. It'll help you. Oh boy. Hair. 
Hair is something that um, I would not recommend learning the way that I learned it. I would recommend actually looking up a tutorial for this because it, it, it's not fun. Um, so what you can do is you can obviously get a preset and just mess around with that and edit hairstyle, but if you want anything that looks like completely your own, you're going to create something new. You're going to want to go into edit hairstyle and you get to hand draw every strand of hair every single one so you're gonna have this little net thing here and that's gonna show you where exactly you can draw hair and you can change that by going into the selection tool clicking on one of these little dots and pulling it outward or inward and that's basically gonna let you change the hair mesh so that it goes into a different shape and that you can change the way the hair uh, reacts. So like if I go into brush and I just draw a strand of hair here and then I go into selections and I mess with the mesh, the hair is going to move with the mesh. So now you can see that's like moving with the mesh. So if you want your hair to be in a certain shape, like a lot of people will use, since there's not really like a hat option, if you're making a custom hat, a lot of people will use the manipulation of the hair mesh to make different shapes in order to make it look like a hat depending on what you're using it for um, also if you want to change the material of the hair so we're gonna add a material uh, I'll just do some little scribblies here let me edit the texture okay the brush width okay so now I've changed the color of the hair here well, what if I want to change the material again? So I go into my hair, I click the material, and it goes back. But the thing is, it doesn't always do that. Like, the, the, the selection tool still confuzzles me. There's probably a video I can watch about it. But I got so frustrated one time because I was trying to change the materials of certain hair strands, and it wasn't changing like right now it's doing really well but i figured out that you have to have this specific strand of hair like you can't just choose the group you have to have the specific strand of hair selected that in order to change the texture like okay that strand of hair we're gonna we want to change the material right we have the group selected which means the material should change it is not changing it's not changing and then if we actually select the hair so we're on the right hair right we're on the right material nope it's not doing that you have to go into the selection tool you have to click it and then you have to make sure you're selected the exact hair strand you want the color to change on <laughs> I don't know why this messes with my brain so much I just I don't I don't like it <laughs> it, it, it boggles my mind why it works this way um, the curve down here is what you're going to use to manipulate the shape of the hair. So you can just drag these points up and down. You can use it to make different textures, blah, blah, blah. Of course, there's sliders here. You can adjust the smoothness. You can adjust twists. You can adjust curls. Thickness and then width are going to be your best friends when you're making like a full head of hair because you're going to want to be able to uh, freaking make the hair thick or thin depending on what you're trying to do with it because you know if you want just like a little front little flyaway strand you're not going to want the hair to be that thick you're going to want it to be like nice and thin there but basically all in all hair in itself is a completely another beast compared to just about everything else in this app because it's so much more complicated because not only do you have to hand draw in every strand to get something completely custom you also have the entirely different sections you have back you have front you have extensions you have side you have a hodge you have extra you have your base hair you have to keep track of all of those and whether or not you're using them and then you also have to make sure you know what the hair meshes look like for each one of them because the hair mesh for an ahage is going to look different from the hair mesh for an extra and that's going to mess you up really bad if you don't know what hair mesh is which because you're going to draw on a piece of hair and you're going to be like why the freak does it look like that and you're going to end up messing up a hair mesh and you're not meaning to body this is this is really all about sliders because here you're really just changing what your model looks like in general you can make the head 
taller, you can make the head wider, you can make them have a super long neck, you can make the neck real thick. Um, this is where you can decide chest size, this is where you decide arm length, you know, all of the stuff that makes your model look more like a person and not, or like at least a custom person and not a preset person, you know what I mean? Um, outfit. This is gonna be huge for a lot of people. Uh, of course, again, presets, those are gonna be fine. But you're gonna wanna use that exporting thing, at least that's what I'm, I'm doing, to get textures in there. Um, Cause like, okay, here is what the, you're gonna load in, you're gonna do your thing. Did it crash? Hello? Okay, that is what, oh gosh, it looks so stretched on this model, but that is what the shirt of my current model looks like, and that is all custom uh, textures that I had imported in. Um, the way that you can decide what you're going to do and how you're going to put that stuff in, you're going to have to be careful, because there's a couple of different things that Vero is going to ask you to do, and it's going to, what you're going to do is going to change depending on what you want to accomplish. It's really kind of a process of elimination, at least the way that I have worked through it. So, there are different templates in clothes depending on what you have chosen to do. So, if you, uh, let's just, let's go into bottoms because I don't think I can add any more layers here. But let's add a template here. It's going to come up with this. Now, this is obviously, to you guys, it's not going to seem like a huge deal. Like, oh, I want my character to wear a t-shirt. Okay, I'll use the t-shirt blank template and then I'll export that so I have the right size. You know, it's going to seem pretty simple, right? But if you want something a little more custom, say you want a corseted dress, say you want a specific looking skirt, say instead of, you know, just like a tie, a string, a bow, and a small tie, you want an actual, like, necklace, that's going to change what you, the way that you, which template you choose to draw your blank one on. Your go-to one for any piece of clothing outside of like just a basic t-shirt and pants and dress is going to be a bodysuit because that's going to let you have a lot more range of function with the drawing and with just about everything else in between because this gives you access to everything across the entire body. You can see there it has a template for every part of the body. So if you want to draw a shirt, you can draw on this template. If you want to draw sleeves, you can draw on this template. If you want to draw nails, you can draw on this template. Basically everything. It also gives you a lot more free range with the sliders so that you can adjust how your clothing looks. If I hadn't done my shirt on the bodysuit template, we wouldn't have these cute little puffy sleeves because you can't adjust other clothes like that. But with the bodysuit, you have a ton of different options. You can shrink, you can expand, you can increase the bulk, you can change the bulk from the elbow, you know, a bunch of different things just like all over the place that lets you absolutely customize the sweet bejesus out of this thing. But the bodysuit is going to be your most like versatile option for clothing, for jewelry, for gloves, for anything in between. But you can use a preset if you need to. As you can see, I just put this preset dress on my model because for one of my recent projects, I wanted to have a longer skirt. But the issue was is that all of the um, preset blank preset dresses you can see in here that I would usually use for templates have really short skirts and you can't really make them that long even using sliders. So I just got this dress and I took the template from that and I put my, I replaced it with my custom texture. The only issue with that is that the, you're going to get a lot less versatility on how you can edit the uh, texture with sliders and you're also going to have to be careful that the um, preset doesn't mess things up because preset textures are sometimes kind of warped honestly my dude and if you use a preset texture and then replace it you might end up with a kind of an issue um I fully like don't really understand the accessories tab like basically I just used it to add glasses to my model and then, you know, mess around with the freaking sliders of the glasses till they looked cool, and then I added my glasses texture over them so that they looked the way I wanted them to. Um, apparently some people use them for hats as well. I don't know how you would use the accessory tab for hats, because the templates are so limited that it's like, I don't know how you would 
be able to manipulate them further enough in order to get the kind of uh, idea you were thinking. But I mean, people are able to do it, and I, I don't understand. But um, I am, I am in awe of it because I don't understand. I, I, doesn't make sense to me. Um, boning is going to change the way that your outfit moves. Unfortunately, Vroid in its current state doesn't have a ton of working like specific outfit rigging that you can change like there's a lot of hair rigging you can do but you can't really change the way that the outfit moves which is sad because i feel like vroid would do so well if they had the ability to do outfit and body rigging and let you move things because i think it would be adorable if my little ears like moved when i talked that would be so cute but i can't do that so it's just sadness um, a couple of other things we're going to address. Importing custom items. This is for if you are taking basically um, items off of booth or if you're using items that you made in blend or anything. That's what that's for. I could not get it to work when I had a 3D item that I wanted to import in. I couldn't get it to work. So I don't know if they fixed that in the new update or if that's just something that you have to um, suffer with. But, uh, yeah, as far as I know, there's not really anything you can do about it, at least for me. It might just be because my computer is, again, trash. Um, so, if I fix it and get a nicer computer, maybe I'll be able to do it, but I just don't think my computer can handle it right now. I don't know where our model went. Oh, there she is. Okay. Um, and then if you do exporting, exporting is going to be different because it's going to change depending on what you want to do. If you export it as a VRM, that is going to allow you to have your model on your computer or your device. Um, uh, so you can transfer it over to a USB port, so if you're like trying to move your devices over and you want to take your model with you, you're going to want to export it as a VRM and then move the file over to your new device. Um, you can also use it to import models into a uh, different uh, 3D modeling app, so like you can put your uh, models into Blender as a VRM file, um, uploading them to Vero Vroid Hub. So Vroid Hub is basically the marketplace where you can show off your different models. Um, you, I have a Vroid account, you can see all of my current models there, and that's also the earliest place where I'll be posting my upcoming models, so if you guys want to go check out my stuff over there, my name on it is, I believe, Unicorn in a Top Hat or Juniper. Um, and then exporting it for 3D printing basically makes it into a 3D model that you can turn into a blueprint for if you have a 3D printer, which I sadly don't, but I think it'd be so fun to be able to print little mini figures of my model. That would be so cute, but I just don't have a 3D printer, so I physically can't do that. Um, but yeah, I believe that that is my basic overview of how I create my models in Vroid Studio and kind of like a small selection of the information I learned by stumbling through this program. If you guys want me to do more on this, you want me to expand, if you have any other questions, I will be willing to do so. I need to go fix my camera though, so I will see you in the next one. Bye!